In this lesson, and actually this lesson is split over two videos because I wanted to do a whole separate video on keyword research. It might take a little bit longer than trying to smush it into a 10 minute video. I'm gonna set the stage for planning out the content on your site. This is keyword research. This is a little bit of site structure, planning, content planning, that sort of stuff. Everything that happens before you actually start writing the blog post. You gotta know what to write, keyword research. So I'll do this other, over two videos. First, you missed the uh, site structure video. If you're just watching the free version on YouTube, you go pay me $3 for the full course and uh, watch that bonus video, yada, yada. So I want to reiterate this. I said this once before already, but I think most people should do keyword research and content planning and competitor analysis at the same time. This isn't three different things you do for SEO, really, at least, you can kind of do them at the same time. You sit down at your computer and you work and you're kind of doing all this simultaneously, if you will, at the same time. And I drew this a couple of months ago, just uh, as an example, you find a competitor and you check out their site and you find some more keyword ideas and you, you know, write those down in your keyword idea list. And as you're doing that, you analyze the keywords to see how difficult they are. We'll talk about this in the next video how much search volume are you know happening for this particular keyword. And as you're doing this analysis, you find more competitors and you find more keyword ideas. And then you analyze some more and you find more competitors and more keyword ideas. It's this uh, vicious cycle of keyword research, content planning, determining your site structure, setting categories for your site. All of this happens together, really. If you're doing this right, in my opinion, you could try to make these different things, but Honestly, it, it kind of happens. It flows naturally together to do it at the same time. So just want to like throw that out there and you might disagree with me and that's fine too. Some people might do this different, but most of the SEO content creators the um, or most of the content creators who teach SEO that I know and follow and I've bought their courses over the years, we all do it this way. Like this is pretty broad in my opinion. Might use different tools, but it's pretty broad. Same sort of things happen here. Okay. Before we talk about keyword research, which is going to be in a separate video in just a second, Content plan. What is that? What do I mean by a content plan? I mean, what you produce when you produce it. The articles you're going to write in what order. That's what a content plan is to me. So for new sites, only new sites, I'm talking about if you're starting a new niche site or if you're a brand new blogger, I would personally suggest publishing, I don't know, 20, 30, maybe even up to 50 blog posts before you do much of this planning stuff at all, like just find 30 keywords that you want to write about or you think you can rank for, yada, yada. We'll talk about that in the next video. And then just do them, right? Before you know exactly what your site is going to be about. You might have a general idea. You have the big topic, but really you don't, you don't know what Google's going to like. They might send traffic to this content right here, but not this content. I don't know why. As you start to understand those things, that matters less. So for existing sites, your content plan is just, what do you feel the need to publish next? It's as simple as that. But for new sites, I, I highly recommend publishing 30 posts across a few different categories just to see what Google is going to favor, if anything. Okay. Um, oh, and again, the goal, I, I said a different, a few different categories right there. It is, it's important to remember why we're doing this. The point is to get Google to see your content as authoritative on any given topic, on any given uh, category, subcategory, that sort of stuff. That's what we're going for here with setting a content plan. How, what can I write? When do I need to write it in order to have Google see me as an authority? I bumbled my way through that. Hopefully you got that. So for established site, um, again, it, it's, it's not a big deal. You don't really need like a very strict like content plan in my opinion but you should be aiming to get authority in some way or not. So some helpful questions could be to ask what categories are thinner than others. Like you check your categories or even you check your tags and you discover, oh, there's only like two blog posts for this particular category. Maybe you should flesh that out more. Maybe you should like add some of those keywords to your queue, that content to your queue, that sort of stuff. And we'll talk about this in the last lesson, but what categories or topics or subtopics or whatever are being rewarded by Google? Which are Google looking at like, oh yeah, we're going to send traffic to this. You need to know that information. We'll talk about that later. So niche site 
keywords versus blog keywords. I want to get into the different types of content you can write for SEO. So I, I want to talk about this first, but I won't. I'll, I'll hold off. I want to talk about long tail keywords versus normal keywords. Now, most people understand roughly what that is. A shorter keyword might be fountain pens or even best fountain pens. That is pretty clear you know, what people are looking for there. They're looking for recommendations. Best fountain pen for 2022. That's not long tail. Long tail might be how to clean a fountain pen with dried ink. How many words is that? Why do they? Four, six, seven, eight, nine, eight or nine? Doesn't matter. How to clean a fountain pen with dried ink. That's long tail. Which should you do? Well, the answer is, what do you want? What do you want your site to be? If you are on the niche site bandwagon, you're primarily searching for low competition keywords for the most part. Obviously not all, but that's that's the big picture, right? A niche site is a small niche, fountain pens, that's a pretty small niche. It's not parenting, that's a big niche. Um, what you're looking for here is lots of content, maybe like 100 to 300 to 500 blog posts over the course of a couple of years, not right away, that are targeting these low competition, low monthly search volume keywords. Lots of info posts, question posts, how to do X, Y, Z, who, what, when, where, why, which we'll talk about in a second. It's that sort of content, long tail. Compare this with, I was going to use best fountain pen. That's still the same niche, fountain pens, but that's a different type of blog post. It's going to be more competitive in search results. You're going to be competing against larger sites. It's also not quite as informational so much as it is affiliate content. It, which you choose is up to you, and it depends on the goals for your blog, your goals for SEO. There's no right answer here. Long tail keywords or the bigger keywords, they require different types of content. They require different approaches to writing these long tail keywords. You might be fine with an 800 word blog post or a thousand word blog post. Best fountain pens, I can almost guarantee you, is going to naturally require more content on that page, 2,000 words, 2,500, 3,000 words. Again, forget about word counts, that's not the important part, but producing a solid body of content to conquer search intent, remember that word, user intent, it's gonna require more for those bigger keywords, it just will. Those little bitty Q&A things that are like nine words long, that's not, that is, that's not user intent. User intent is probably 800 words or less, I'm just saying. Two different approaches. There's no right or wrong. It depends on your goals for your site and your mindset, your approach to SEO blogging. Niche site or personal blog or big brand or whatever you're doing. It depends. There's no right answer there. Now, before I go on to specific keyword research, let's, let's talk briefly about the two very broad kinds of content. And honestly, this is geared towards bloggers specifically. Info content, affiliate content. Now, affiliate marketing, obviously, you probably already know what that is. If not, go Google it. That's not what this course is on. But Best Fountain Pens is pretty much geared towards affiliate links, probably. I would imagine so. Or Best, I don't know, journals, Best Keyboards, Best Fill-in-the-Blank, Best Whatever for Parents. Affiliate-generated content. You're talking about products or services. You're recommending products or services. You understand. Info content is educational. It's informational. It's a lot of questions. It's a lot of how can I, who do I, when, what, how, that sort of content. Um, it's two different types of writing. It's two different types of search intents and user intent, I guess is the big thing that I want to get across here. There's no right or wrong. You shouldn't do one and not the other. You can do both. That's totally fine. But the thing you have to remember is that they require different approaches. And why do they require different approaches? You already know this. User intent. What people are looking for when they come onto the page. And, I, and this, this is probably like very beginner stuff. You've probably heard a lot of this before. But it's just important to remember the different types of content, the different types of queries, Google search queries, that are out there. Um, how to affiliate content recommendations. Best fountain pens of 2022. The top 10 fountain pens. A, um, a Twisby... Diamond 580 review. That's a fountain pen, <laughs> right? Those are all affiliate uh, queries geared towards products and affiliate marketing. It's usually more competitive than the info content, especially the long tail info content, but two different types of queries, two different types of content.
There you go. Uh, maybe that was needed for you. Maybe that was not. In the next video, we're going to dive into everybody's favorite keyword research.